on some big contract with one of the cable networks and I am not. I do it to continue to spread the message that I was spreading when I was a candidate for president. The other thing that I've been up to has been spreading the message to college campuses. I happen to believe that in order for conservatives to win the Senate and the White House and maintain control of Congress, there are five constituency groups that we have got to connect with as conservatives in order to get them excited about what new leadership would look like in Washington, in Washington D.C., starting at the White House. One, we've got to get conservatives and Republicans to turn out in big numbers. We saw what would happen when that happened in Wisconsin just a couple of days ago. The base has to turn out. Secondly, independence. Polls show that independents are moving our way. Why? Because we are putting solutions on the table. Republicans in Congress want budgets. The Democrat leadership in Washington, they don't want budgets. They don't believe in budgets. The other group that we've got to appeal to, uh, people of faith. People of faith have got to turn out in big numbers and they can be the difference maker in this next election. If the assault on religion by this administration has not awakened them and gotten them out of their pews, I don't know what will. But they can be a huge difference in this upcoming election. And then the other group, the youth vote. This is why I did a, a college and university speaking tour earlier this spring, where I spoke at over 15 colleges and universities, events that were organized by college Republicans and Young Americans Foundation. And to my surprise, and to the surprise of many of the people there, and to the surprise of the media, many of these turnouts were overwhelming. On a couple of college campuses, we had standing room only. Balcony field, main floor field, young people get it. And young people want to be a part of the solution, not just a part of the problem. The message that I delivered to them which is the same message I'm going to deliver in the fall as part of our fall college and university truth tour, as I call it. It's very simple. Washington is broken. And the United States of America is broke. They don't buy the rhetoric and the deception and the untruths about what's going on in this country and what's happening relative to spending and what's happening to this claimed recovery. That is no recovery going on. The private sector is your soundbite of the day. The private sector is hanging in there despite the policies of this administration, not because of the policies of this administration. And the other group that we must appeal to with our message is disgruntled Democrats. Some of them are beginning to admit that they're having voters' remorse. But we can't just depend upon them to still vote our way. Some of them legitimately want to have a compelling reason. So that's what I've been up to, continue to spread the message. The other question that I often sometimes get asked is, am I supporting Governor Mitt Romney? Absolutely yes. And yes, I have met with him. And when I met with Governor Romney a few weeks ago, my opening statement to him in the discussion was, Governor, you will sew up the nomination, and I'm going to do everything that I can to help you get elected, because I'm still on a mission is to help you get elected now, defeat Barack Obama, get control of the United States Senate, and maintain control of the House of Representatives. But I said I want to make it perfectly clear. I don't want anything. I'm not looking for anything. So no, I'm not on a short list. 
nor do I want to be on a short list. That's too much work. I'm enjoying just being a pain in the anchovies of liberals. And I don't need to have an appointed position in order to continue to do that. So that's what I've been up to. That's what I'm going to continue to be up to. And some of you may have heard that it was announced earlier this week that the famous radio talk show host, Neil Boyce, is retiring at the end of the year. And his last day will be Inauguration Day in January. You may have also heard that Cox Radio and WSB have signed me to a contract to replace him. That means that I will be speaking to six million people a week. I think that in itself is a very dangerous proposition for liberals. So that's what I've been up to. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to continue to focus on helping Republicans win, not just the White House, but also the Senate. If you've been to HermanCain.com, you will see that there are a number of Senate candidates that we have actively gotten behind because we need to get back control of the Senate as well. So with that, I will open it up to some questions. Where's Lawrence? Right here, sir. Lawrence, you go first. Mr. Gain, it's a three-part question, quite simple. One, do you have any regrets for dropping out of the GOP nominating race? Two, do you still believe, as you did last fall, that the Romney or Gary campaign was behind those smears? Three, do you feel there's definitely a double standard? Uh, let me answer the second one first. I never said that the Romney campaign was behind those smears. We never said that the uh, Perry campaign was behind those smears. What we did say, to be accurate, is that there were some coincidences uh, in the Perry campaign that were not, you know, that raised some red flags. That's what was said. So we did not definitively declare that they were behind the smears. The other question, do I have any regrets? I do not regret putting family first. That's what this was about. When someone deliberately wanted to smear my reputation with lies over and over and over, and many people in the media, not y'all, insisted on spinning these lies over and over and over and over, it was painful to my family. So I have no regrets of putting family first. Now, what was your third question? Now you just made me forget. <laughs> <laughs> See, those first two answers were so compelling. Actually, part three was, do you feel there was a double standard in the media? Uh, yes. Yes, that was a double standard. Absolutely. The online so-called cable news site that I will not name to avoid a lawsuit, you know who I'm talking about, who basically broke the story. How do you explain that in a two-month period, based upon lies, they ran 772 stories on Herman Cain and those accusations? You don't have to take my word for it. Go to the Media Research Center. They track this kind of stuff. So was there a double standard? Yes. And in that case, that standard was get Herman Cain to drop out of his race. But here's what they didn't achieve. They didn't shut me up because I'm still out here promoting uh, conservative values and I'm still promoting that famous tax code solution that maybe some of you all have heard of, 999. Mr. Cain, one quick follow-up. You've come out and you've made it clear that you endorse Ed Romney for the purpose of bringing unity to the party. Do you believe that possibly Dr. Ron Paul should also come out to bring unity to the party? Yes. I think it's now. Look, the process is what it is. It's not perfect. We know that. But now, I believe that all conservatives and Republicans need to focus on the bigger mission. So yes, I do believe that. Congressman Ron Paul should also get behind our nominee so we can defeat Barack Obama. Thank you, sir. Will you be campaigning with Mitt Romney? Yes, I will. Don't know to the extent to how much or where, but yes, but I'll also be speaking on behalf of 
uh, many of the things that he and I agree on, which I'm doing, so it may not necessarily be shoulder to shoulder on some of the stops, but yes, I'm going to be actively out there supporting you. Mr. Let me take a couple of more. Mr. Kane, uh, the Tea Party uh, started out by being against uh, the run-up of the debt and high taxes, of course, that come with that, and they ended up chanting at the, uh, at the Congress, you work for us. Uh, do you think that uh, the critical issue before us right now has to do with budget, or has it got to do with our core of actual pop popular sovereignty and national sovereignty right now? I think that we have co-critical issues. Uh, number one, this struggling economy. Businesses are hanging in there, looking for some relief in the form of replacing the tax code, looking for some relief in lessening the governmental regulations that are being slammed onto businesses and small businesses are the ones that are being hurt the most. So the economy. Uh, secondly, yes, our national security, and thirdly, co-equally, our sovereignty. You're absolutely right. The American people, the Tea Party people, they have had three very simple objectives when they look at a candidate. Fiscal responsibility. This Congress hasn't even passed a budget in over three years. How do you run any enterprise without a budget? The answer is you don't. And so this Congress and this administration, this president, they're making it up as they go. Now, I'm not mad at y'all. I just get passionate about this, okay? So don't take this as me being an angry black man. No, <laughs> I'm a passionate patriot. Uh, similarly, the spending. Here's what the administration and this president don't get. The American people get it. They get it. They understand that we've got runaway spending. They do. And they understand that this president, this administration, has been negligent in effectively dealing with it. So yes, I think national sovereignty is a big issue in the minds of people. But first and foremost is this economy. They know that the jobs numbers are being jimmied with. They know that because there are enough of us out there reminding them. This is the last question. Mr. Yes, sir. Mr. Kane, Julio Arceo, WGCN Radio. Uh, speaking of uh, national sovereignty, uh, a couple months ago, Defense Secretary Panetta told Senator Jeff Sessions uh, about the decision that our troops, will, uh, in order to go to war, will get our decision from the United Nations and NATO. And we saw uh, a couple months ago the decision to go into Libya was based off a UN resolution. Do you see that as a continual trend that we will get our decisions from? Uh, government bodies like the UN and NATO, or should we go back to following the Constitution and get a declaration of war that way? When we elect Mitt Romney, we're going to follow the Constitution, not the United Nations. Therein lies a big difference between Republicans and Democrats. We, some people still respect the United Nations as a body. I don't think it's time to throw in the towel on them yet. But we should not be following the United Nations when it comes to war. We should go back to the Constitution. This gentleman, he was here first, so he gets his last question. I just have two questions. The first one is, can you tell us about Kane's solution revolution and how that's impacted your ability to spread the conservative message to voters? And question number two is, what's, what is one standard or model that you've upheld to maintain a successful um, business career? Uh, Kane's solutions revolution is a not-for-profit initiative that I started after I got out of the campaign to continue to promote replacing the tax code with 999. Sound money, making the dollar as good as gold. Those two go hand in hand. Thirdly, continuing to spread the message that as a nation, we can become energy independent. We have the resources. But we have something standing in the way called the EPA. It needs to be replaced with what Newt Gingrich describes as the ESA, Environmental Solutions Agency. And so solutions is what we have got to uh, get our elected officials to focus on. The one one of the things that has always been consistent in my career is that whenever I've been presented with an opportunity, good, difficult, impossible, I've never been presented with easy ones. I don't know who gets those, but I've never gotten an easy one. 
The one thing that I have always done is first, if it's an opportunity that I'm excited about taking on, and I pray about it, and make the decision to do it, I never look back. Too many people make a decision in that career, and they're constantly second-guessing themselves. It takes extra energy. Never look back if you're convinced that passionately this is something that you want to do. Thanks for that question. Thank you. Well, thank you all very much. And uh, I'm going to be giving a speech in about 35 minutes or so in the main room, and I'll give you all a preview. Big government Goliath is going down.